The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to Lesson 63 of your Distance Learning Session for Geology of Basic Science with Kenneth Yosimbo. During our Lesson 62, we had an assignment. We shall now proceed to look at the correction of the assignment. Now we're given this map and we're asked to, with reference to the map, deduce the order of geological events in the area shown by the map. Now, if we get back to our map, remember our assessment. Our assessment is always trying to get the succession Then we get the structures, then we get the uh, igneous bodies, then we get the geomorphology, then we can now give the order of event, which is the history. So, from our map, the column from the uh, column or the key that is given, it is mostly for uh, igneous rocks. So you have the granite, you have uh, you have um, dolerite. You know that granite is a major intrusion. Dolerite is a minor intrusion. And then um, basalt, that is lava flow. And then you have now agglomerates, which are uh, uh, pyroclasts. So, from our map, we realize that succession there is represented by bed A, B, C, and then you have D, and you also have E. Then, structures. If you look at A, A is in the middle, and B is regularly repeating around it, so there is folding. Then, if you look at this, there is visible displacement, so there is a fold. And then, if you look at the way the material is uh, class, you will realize that uh, this basaltic lava flow, both here and here, is lying horizontally on folded beds. So it is lying unconformably on folded beds. So there is supposed to be an unconformity. Then, you realize that this is a, gran a granitic intrusion, which is a major intrusion. You also have dikes. And then you have seals. So there are igneous bodies. And then you have lava flow and pyroclasts represented by agglomerates. So you have lava flows. Then the only information that is lacking here is, um, is uh, uh, surface deposits. So if we were to come to our order, we will start working on that map only on this. We have succession, which are represented by beds A to E. We have structures, that is, we have folds, faults, and unconformities. We have igneous bodies, that is, we have both intrusive uh, features and uh, extrusive features. It makes the map interpretation now very easy, or it makes the history of that area very easy to deduce. Therefore, now, the first event on that area, or in that area, would have been the position of bed A, B, C, D, and E. Why begin with bed A? It's because bed A is the core bed of an anticline. 
and Corbett are of anticlines are older. So there was first of all the deposition of bed A to E. Then after which they were uh, they were folded. There was folding. Then after the folding, there was what? Intrusion. How do we know that there were intrusions? If you come to this map, you will realize that the fault is displacing the dike. Therefore, the dike was there first before faulting. And a dike is what? An intrusion. So we have to take note of that. So there was intrusion before faulting. You see that if you do not know this order, you will not know how to uh, do adjustment with the way the events were occurring. Then after the intrusions, then there was faulting. Then after faulting, there was an unconformity. How do we know that there were unconformities after faulting? It's because when you come here to where you have the lava flow, this is the lava flow, you will realize that the fault ends there. It's not displacing the lava flow. So the lava flow came after the fault. That is the uh, way to deduce. Then after the unconformities now, you now have the lava flow, which is the last thing in that area. So that is the geologic um, interpretation of the history of the way events were laid down in the area represented by this map. Now, we are still on interpretation of geological features on maps. We have seen type, from types of maps right up to strike line, three-point problems, and geological history. Now, this information from types of maps up to three-point problems was still assessing the geology of an area. Now, from history, we are already interpreting. And now, we will go ahead to do more interpretation using geological cross sections that is why we will handle cross sections for all the scripture uh, for all the structures one after the other so our lesson 63 is titled geological cross sections one there are other cross sections so as we go through cross sections we will see the objectives, we will see the information that is very important for uh, uh, better understanding of cross-sections. Then we will have a real-life situation, we have some learning activities, then exercises, and we shall end our lesson with an assignment. As we go through our lesson on geological cross-section, the end we shall be able to define a geological cross section. Then know the steps for drawing a geological cross section and then draw topographic sections or come out with profiles. Because when we are using topography, we can get the profile before we start fitting in the geology of that area. So for today, we will only know the steps of how to draw a geological cross section and then know how to draw a profile. Now, we need a better understanding of denudational geology, petrology, structural geology, and historical geology in order to approach uh, geological cross-sections with a lot of ease. So, if we observe these photos, you will realize that photo A is a beach, Photo B, fracture. Photo C, stratification. Photo D, unconformity. A geologist, therefore, collects petrographic and structural data at different localities in the field. At each sampling point, he notes the coordinates, the name of the locality, and takes a photo of the essential feature. Now, the question we are asking ourselves is what uh, or which means or method of data presentation will easily reveal the relationship between the rocks and the structures of the different localities. Remember that he was collecting at different localities and each time he would take a photo of the most essential feature. Like we have seen 
in the different photos. So, if he uses histograms and cumulative frequency curves or stereograms or geological maps, will they be able to have that revelation of the relationship of rocks and structures? That is the question we shall be answering as we go through our lesson on uh, geological cross-section. Now, in our activity, take a look at this map. You shall observe it and you bring out striking uh, elements of the map. It is still map 15. On this map, we have visible displacement. We have uh, folding, which is observed from regular repetition. Then we also have tectonic activities that are indicated by contour lines crossing their boundaries. Therefore, the striking aspects include the fact that contour lines cross bed boundaries, indicating inclined beds. And then uh, there is regular repetition of beds and the visible displacement indicating tectonic effects. Now, inclined beds and tectonic effects suggest a deep and general trend of beds on level ground that guides us to our lesson of today that is on geological cross sections we, we can draw cross sections for all everything both horizontal beds inclined beds folded beds that is why that those striking informations are very very important for us now remember that we also said that up to three point problem, we were still assessing the geology and we are now interpreting the geology using geological history as well as using cross section. Now, to draw a geological cross section, or a geological cross section is a topographic profile of the horizontal distance plotted against the vertical height, showing the succession of the various strata as they appear on the subsoil. Take note, there is topographic profile and that topographic profile reveals the vertical, uh, 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 the vertical succession of information that occurs uh, or as it occurs underground or subsoil. So for geological cross sections, we don't deal with what, with what happens on the surface, we deal with subsurface information. That is why we could also say that it is what? A vertical slide that gives the uh, uh, geology, a brief geology or a cross-sectional geology of an area that is represented on the map. Now, this is an example of a geological cross-section. You have the map. Remember that in a cross-section, there must be the line of section. And here the line of section is A to B. When we were doing grid references, we came up with a line of section by using grid references from one grid reference to another, indicating two points. So there must be two points in order to come up with a geological, uh, with a line of section. Then you now have a cross section that has been drawn. We are going to find out steps. This is just an example for us to know what a cross section is. And in this cross section, you have a fault and you have folds represented. Then, um, the B part of our lesson has to do with the steps for drawing geological cross sections. Now, the first step to draw a cross section is first to determine the line along which to draw the section. That is called the line of section. There is no cross section without the line of section. So, we note the line of section and we have said the line of section can be from A to B. It can also be from A prime but from A to A prime. Then we can also have it from X to Y or from one grid reference to another. The reverse is not true. So when you get to a cross section, you must know that there is a beginning point and the end point so that you will know how to place uh, or how to, to capture the information. Then step two, draw an axe 
of an approximate scale with the topographic values. That is going to guide you to come up with the vertical scale. We will see it in workable examples. Then step three, transfer the topographic information from the map to the section. Step four, transfer the lithological boundaries. Faults, for example, on to the cross section in the same way. Now, you are going to do two things. You are transferring the topographic information to have the profile. Then now, from the profile, you can now transfer the lithological boundaries as well as faults into the map in order to know how the geology of that area is presented as from the information of the map. Now, step five, transfer bedding readings onto the section, Correct, uh, correcting for, that is, uh, correcting for apparent D if, uh, uh, if necessary. Now, for you to draw to scale, you must be sensitive of this point. That is, transferring the beds or the bed readings onto the section. Correcting for, that is, they should correctly appear as the dips are. If the, the section must be to scale. Now, step six. Using the bedding readings as a guide, draw in the lithological boundaries both above and below the surface. Note should be taken here that you know, when information goes above the, uh, above the, the, the surface, then the next step will be geologic, uh, geology extend, uh, extended above the, topogra uh, the, above, the topogra uh, above the topography is shown by uh, dashed lines. Now, take note that dashed lines represent information that, you know, is imaginary. Since we are dealing with subsurface, when it comes above the surface, it is, there, is no, uh, there are no grounds for us to do the judgment. So it is represented using dashed lines, since it is imaginary. Now note, to insert the information on the section, first thing first, first draw the unconformities, then faults, intrusions, since they are what? Discordant features. And then you can bring in the lava flows. So if you are drawing a cross-section for a map that contains all the geological structures, you are going to begin with unconformities first. Because unconformities are simply irregularities. If you don't bring in the irregularities first, it will be difficult for you to know how the pattern of beds are, are cropping. Then you bring in fault because along fault zones, there is going to be what? The, the, the beds are going to stop and then the visible displacement is supposed to be indicated. Then you bring in, in intrusions because intrusions to the beds are supposed to stop at the border of the intrusion before they can continue thereafter. Then you end with lava flows. Do not curve if, you, if your points occur above the profile section. That is why we say if you must extend the points, it should be with dash, uh, with, uh, uh, with dash so that you will, it will be understood that is information that is imaginary. Now, for maps without contours, deep directions and amounts of dips are given. We take on this point again. For maps without contours, deep directions and amount of dips are given. Then plot the information by the use of a protractor if it must be to scale. Then provide a key in the vertical column, which, shown, uh, which shows the what the relative edges of the rocks. Relative edges here, you know, in stratigraphy we say that relative dating is approximate edges. That is, you are doing a comparison 
using terms like older, younger, and so on. Then you include correct levels and map vertical and horizontal scale of that map. Now, this is an example of a complete geological cross-section. Take note of the different elements that are there. You have the first element. There is the fact that if this is our profile, if this is our profile, for example, this is the profile for which we are supposed to draw our cross-section. For example, then you need to come here first thing first. You put the north. That is how the information will be read. Then how did you get this information from the map? You draw, if the map is a square or a rectangle, you draw a rectangle. And then if the information, if this is point A and that is point B, then that is where your line of section is. You present it so that somebody will know how you got the information from the map before presenting it as a cross section. Then here you put the vertical, the horizontal scale. Horizontal, horizontal scale. And then here you put the vertical, vertical scale of the map. Then the next thing to do now will be the title, when you would have finished drawing. This information must be there before you start bringing in the geology. Then after you would have brought in the geology, then you now include the key of the map. Those are the different, uh, the key of the session, what is involved in the cross section. Like the case that we have here, have the case where we have we are drawing the cross section from A to A prime, and then you have the different the, that map shows. You see here there is an unconformity, and then you have a fold. You have a fold. Then there are no faults in the area that is represented in the cross section. Then you have the geological column represented with symbols included. What is possibly used in the uh, in the cross section. You also have the scale. This is the scale of that cross section, which is only the horizontal scale. You can miss out on the uh, vertical scale, but for the horizontal scale, don't miss it out because that is the scale that shows how uh, that shows the area and the information that has been collected from that area. Recall that. Geological cross section. A geological cross section is a topographic profile of the horizontal distance plotted against the vertical height, showing the succession of the various strata as they appear on the subsoil. Or it is a vertical slice. To draw a geological cross section, the first thing we must determine the line along which the uh, along which to draw the cross section that is called the line of section and that the line of section must always be from a to b x to y a to a prime so that when you are getting the information from the map you will know how to place the paper and also how to collect and present the cross section then, secondly, you draw axis of an approximate scale with the topographic values, that is, the contour lines. Then, to insert the information on the section, you begin first with the unconformities, then faults, intrusions, since they are what? Discordant features. Then you draw in the lava flows. So, drawing in folds should be the last thing in the cross section. Then do not curve if your point occur above the one, the profile section. Then we dive into some exercises. Exercise number one. Before we look at the exercise number one, remember that we evoke a situation at the beginning of the lesson. Now we have been talking about drawing a cross section on the map and naming the different features that can be drawn on the map, both the topography and the geological information. So, possibly, 
for the geologist to uh, the method the geologist is supposed to use in order to relay the uh, in order to re uh, to review the relationship between the rocks and the structures can only be using a geological map so question number 1 or exercise number 1 a geological cross section is characterized by one plot of topographic profile of horizontal against the vertical distance two succession of the various strata as they appear on the subsoil three outcrop of the surface of the uh, of the surface strata now which is the correct answer a two and three are we saying that succession of the various strata as they appear on subsoil and the outcrop on the surface of strata is the right answer one two and three then c one and three then d one and two so which is the correct answer the correct answer is b we are saying that a geological cross section is characterized by a plot of the topographic profile of the horizontal against the vertical distance and that it also involves the succession of the various strata as they appear on subsoil and lastly that it will include the outcrop of the surface of strata then to insert the geologic information on the section what must you do first a draw on conformities then faults and intrusion b do not curve if you if your points occur above the profile section c plot the information by use of a protractor d provide a key in the vertical column remember that the question requires for us to uh, to say what we must do first in order to insert the geologic information on the section so correct answer is a we said that to draw to 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 insert geologic information on the section you should begin first with unconformities then faults and then intrusions because they are they lie discordantly question number 3 for maps without contours or spot height the geologic section is assumed to be a a vertical surface b a horizontal surface c a gentle surface d an inclined surface which is the correct answer if you look at this profile it is an indication that the area has uh, contours then in cases where you don't have contours at all what do you what assumption should be made the assumption is that the area is a horizontal surface so that way the profile is supposed to be you can even draw a box as a profile now assignment state six steps for drawing a geological cross section state six steps for drawing a geological cross section now, to understand this lesson on cross section, you can visit the geology for advanced level by Kenneth Yusimbong. You can visit the principles of geology. You can also visit the fundamentals of geology by uh, Ayonge and others. We have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will continue on construction of sections of horizontal strata. Una tege si ma tege yob, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia dinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 